Welcome to another episode of Tuesday Talks. I'm Seema Kumar, I'm the CEO of Cure, and I'm here in New York City, and I'm thrilled to introduce you to our guest today, and that is Susan Rosenthal. She is a Senior Vice President for Life Sciences at the New York City Economic Development Corporation, where she oversees the overall healthcare landscape here in the city. Before I introduce Susan though, I wanna spend a minute telling you a little bit about what the EDC is all about and their ambitious program. And the ambitious program actually focuses on creating 40,000 new jobs. It's a $1 billion effort. And actually to make New York City the center of the life sciences ecosystem in this country. And it's a phenomenal program. And I'm gonna roll the tape now so you can take a little peek at what this is all about. Wow, what an impressive video. It's such a pleasure to have you here, Susan. Welcome to Cure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today, Seema. You must be so proud leading the charge on this ambitious initiative here in New York City to make it, you know, a life sciences hub. I, I'm, I, every day I wake up thinking how, how fortunate I am to be in this position and how, what a great opportunity for the city to build uh, this industry that I care deeply about in a city that I care deeply about uh, to create the science moving forward, the jobs for people, uh, and everything that will bring life sciences to life here in New York. I mean, that's a tall order, right? 40,000 jobs, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's possible to do that? I think it's more than possible. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to put in place the infrastructure, the translational R&D, uh, the uh, talent programs, uh, to make sure that we are uh, going to have several thriving life sciences hubs at, in New York City uh, that have the activity happening here. You'll see the science, you'll see those cures and therapies moving forward in, in their uh, company's pipelines, uh, but you'll also see people uh, coming to work, whether they're coming to work in a lab, coming to work uh, in an office, uh, thinking about uh, how do we uh, help people live better, longer lives. Yeah. And so that's a really exciting thing to be, be able to work on on a daily basis. That's, that's so great. And uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago, just two years ago, and I know everybody has pandemic fatigue, yeah. but we have to spend a minute talking about the incredible work that you and your teams did mm -hmm. here in the city during the pandemic, because you had to do what? Some 80K tests, right? Well, it was, it was such a terrible time. You yeah. remember, everybody remembers that feeling, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what do we do? How do we know if we have it? How do we know if we can go to work? How do we yeah. know if we can go to school? Uh, how do we know if we can see our loved ones? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I really applaud the city's response, both in making available testing and treatment and all the different needs uh, for free, right? And, and at least testing was, was free. I think the healthcare system has to work the rest out. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we uh, rolled up our sleeves. At the time, it was really scary, and we thought, how can we help? Mm -hmm. We have all these incredible relationships with uh, the institutions, with manufacturers, with uh, companies across New York City, and so we uh, launched an effort to make sure that we had enough testing in the city, and we launched the Pandemic Response Lab uh, with OpenTrons, uh, with NYU, and with many different partners across the health and hospitals and test and trace system. And we did it in three months, wow. which was wild. Yeah. Uh, and really, uh, like, a, a life-affirming moment for me of, um, you know, this is why I'm in life sciences. I want to be able to help and, and help people have access to care. Um, and so that was a really incredible effort by the city, by the team at EDC, um, and the team at Health and Hospitals and Test and Trace. And you had to get the results back in 24 hours, right? Yes. Like that's a so, ton uh, of tests. Well, and it, that was the issue, right? Like yeah. we knew that the, the country was going to see this uh, incredible surge for COVID at various different points in time, um, and that would put a strain on the system. And so we said, rather than have New York City add to that strain, let's build our own lab and, and make sure that we have results because if it's three days, four days of a result, it's not that useful. Um, and so we made sure that the lab could process tests. Uh, you mentioned 80,000 tests. Yeah. They also did sequencing for the city to look for variants. Yeah. Um, and so anybody could go to one of the health and hospital sites or the various different sites that 
uh, the pandemic response lab was connected to, and you could get a test result. We say 24 hours, oftentimes it was much faster than that. Wow, that's just incredible. It's just an indication of how, you know, you know, a, a team that is mm -hmm. based here in the city can do such great, yeah. you know, work, right? Well, and I, my heart goes to everybody on this team because we had people that their day job uh, was something entirely different. It was something contract related or uh, finance related. And we said, actually, we need your help. We need to figure out how to build a lab and how to get the equipment and how to get the consumables and how to get up to get the real estate going and, and, and where do we put it and what are the regulations and how do we make that happen? And, and people just said, yes. So Susan, you talked about how fulfilling it was to be at the EDC and to have such a big impact during you know, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and, but you're working for the government and before that you used to work for Pfizer, for a pharmaceutical company. So what made you change uh, trajectory and what are the similarities and differences and what's the kind of impact you can have working for the government at the EDC? Yeah, I mean, I, I went into life sciences in the beginning simply because it's a great way to pay it forward. You're mm -hmm. making people live longer, better, higher quality lives. And while I was at Pfizer, that was incredibly rewarding. We were helping determine which areas that we would study medicines, what medicine would serve what patient population. And that is incredibly re rewarding. Um, and as a born and bred New Yorker, I didn't understand why we weren't doing that more in New York City. And so uh, I came to EDC because I saw this effort to build life sciences and I thought, oh, we should do that more. We have such great science here. We have so many talented people across New York City. We should build this more. Um, and so I, I came to EDC because I thought, um, there's such a huge opportunity here and I want to be a part of that. And it's, it's about not only helping to create new cures and new therapies, uh, but also to help New York. That's great. I mean, we've talked about this before, which is that, you know, Boston and Kendall Square is the darling of the biotech world. And then Silicon Valley is the darling of the, you know, tech world. And here in New York, we have the number of hospitals we have, the number mm -hmm. of universities we mm -hmm. have, the number of companies we have, you know, all of the ingredients are here to make this a real hub. Mm -hmm. So why hasn't it happened and what can we do to make that, to accelerate it? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. If you asked me that question five years ago, I would have said, well, it's because there wasn't a place for a company to go. Yeah. Um, there were, there was no cure. There was no, um, there was, there were maybe one or two uh, locations that you could put a company in, in life sciences. There were one or two incubators at the time. Um, now we have 11. Um, we have visibility to a few more coming online. Uh, 11 incubators, I should say. Yes. Um, and those incubators each can house 20, 30 companies at a time. Yes. Um, and so those companies can then spin out to places, whether it's Cure, whether it's um, on the west side. We're, we're seeing, you mentioned Kendall Square. Um, Kendall Square is sort of uh, obviously this very central, concentrated place. Um, and then it sort of goes out from there mm -hmm. in, in Cambridge. In New York, we're going to see these two corridors on the east and west side. We're, we're in one now. Uh, we're at Kipps Bay, which will be a hub uh, for life sciences. We know that there will be a cluster on the Upper East Side and, and eventually up in Morris Park. On the West Side, we see one in, in the mid-50s um, that's thriving now, that has mm -hmm. several buildings uh, and several companies that are there, um, up in West Harlem, down uh, in Hudson Valley, uh, not Hudson Valley, uh, Hudson Square, Hudson Square yeah. um, and out in Long Island City. And we see these clusters emerging. So we're going to see, um, you know, New York City tends to, to dwarf other cities. Um, when you give us uh, a goal, we go for it. And, and we're going to see many uh, clusters emerge uh, along those two corridors and then some. And of course, we're the financial capital. So, yes. you know, that is a lot of promise. Yeah, well, you, you, so the, the amount of funding that happens here is incredible. The access to those financial markets, the access for international companies to come here and, and land in the U.S. In, in essentially the capital of the world. Yeah. Uh, but also, we're becoming a tech hub. Yes. Uh, I, I should, I becoming, we are a tech we hub. We are a tech uh, hub, yeah. And actually, I mentioned to the five years ago, I think if you asked me that question today, I'd say we're well on our way, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a really exciting time. We see the opportunity. There are places for companies to grow. Uh, we have uh, IP coming out of uh, the, the institutions, left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. uh, those companies are starting, whether you're Synchron coming out of uh, Mount Sinai, going to the Brooklyn Navy Yard, uh, whether you're Lexio coming, uh, coming here into here, the Cure, to cure. Yeah. Um, whether you're Velastra coming out of Wall Cornell going to West Harlem. Um, we see this happening, and, and while the markets have cooled a little bit, um, I think that's a very healthy correction. Yeah. Um, and we see the raises continuing in a more measured way, uh, but certainly if the science is there and the data are there and the leadership is there, venture capital is investing. Absolutely, and you know, the other thing we also talked about is that 
so we, we talked about Boston being biotech hub mm -hmm. and Silicon Valley being tech or digital hub. New York has an opportunity to actually combine the two because mm. we're right Absolutely. here on Silicon Alley, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. this is the kind of thing that gets me almost like coming out of my chair <laughs> yes. um, because it, it's just such an exciting time here. I know. Uh, you see um, the tech talent here and the biotech talent. You think of companies like Schrodinger uh, yeah. and, and the, the modeling that they're doing. Um, you think of, I mentioned Synchron, they're mm -hmm. using robotics, and it's, it's sort of a baseline now in New York yeah. City. You hear when you speak to company leadership, um, they talk about their science and they also talk about their technology, and they talk about hiring biologists who can code. Yeah. Uh, and, so, and that talent is here. Um, and I believe that we're going to see um, this uh, continued hybrid of tech and, and biology together um, as, as companies continue to form and grow in New York City. And that's the next frontier, right? Yes. Because yes. you know, there's all the craze about AI, mm -hmm. but just imagine if we could use AI for good. Absolutely. To Absolutely. really transform healthcare, yeah. right? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Yeah, yeah. As, um, yeah. Th there are so many examples of that. You know, I, I know the traditional example in, in life sciences for, for biotech and pharma is using AI for drug discovery and mm -hmm. that you're using it to find, uh, to screen more candidates, to find more targets. Uh, to identify better drugs for different patient targets and different disease targets. Um, that's sort of the traditional example, but we're seeing it um, in healthcare processes and improving um, the flow of information and the flow of, of electronic health records. Uh, we're seeing it um, in, in predictive modeling for um, looking at, at uh, retrospective analyses and using that data. Um, and boy, does New York City have strong data, right? Yes. We have such an incredible uh, population uh, to and diverse data too. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and and that's something you want to be uh, for good, right? You want to be very mindful. Yeah. It should be for the patient. It should be for the community, um, and it should be with the patient and yes. with the community. Uh, but that is something that is a a, a, a value uh, that we have here that we're we're thinking about. How can we how can we tap into that more? Yeah, and 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 you know, so we are so excited about this new innovation challenge we're about to launch. Ooh. And thank you for being you Tell know, me part more. of the yeah yeah. Thank you for being you know uh, offering to be part of the advisory board yes. looking at yes. this. Yes. So the challenge is actually calling on all all uh, calling on all entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to actually leverage AI mm -hmm. uh, to solve a big healthcare problem. Yeah. And so the submissions uh, and the nominations are opening up in September. Yeah. And so we're excited to see what comes yeah. uh, through the applications. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really excited for this because I think while we have learned a lot over the past, we'll call it 50 to 100 years uh, about the human body, about health, about wellness. Um, we have a really long way to go. Yes. And so there are some pretty big, hairy problems out there still. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you want your loved ones to have really great quality lives. And um, you know, the medicines we have, we're very thankful for. Yes. Um, but there's a long way to go in care. Yep. And so I'm hopeful that this competition will bring some really great ideas uh, and some really great science forward. Yeah, and so what do you think are some of the big key problems in healthcare that still remains to be solved? Not just diseases. Yeah. But system-wide? Oof, oof, what a question, Sina. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think uh, everybody does not have access at yeah. this point. Uh, and that could be in the United States, that could be globally, that could be right here in New York City. And that really flummoxes me. Yeah. I really feel we have resources in this world to provide care. And whether that's about uh, the system itself and improving the system, whether that's about working with communities more and making sure uh, that we are bridging those systems with the community to make people feel more comfortable engaging with the healthcare system, um, and whether that's about efficiency and making sure that um, we are, are giving care for the right care purposes. Um, that can all improve within the broader system. Um, so I think that's a, a huge area of need. Mm -hmm. um, and then frankly, calling back to the pandemic, um, our, our climate is changing. Uh, that is going to put a lot of stress on the healthcare system. And so are we ready? Uh, that yeah. is, I don't think so. Yep. Um, and so whether that's about the next virus, the next fungus, the next bacteria uh, yep. that may, you know, as the earth warms and that, that New moves. New microbes will emerge. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so are we, uh, how do we make sure that we are ahead of that as opposed yeah. to reactive? And, you know, unfortunately for COVID, we were a little more reactive than I personally yeah. would have liked. Uh, I think many people would agree with me on that, but I really hope we learned from that and, and we get ready for whatever may come down the road. Yes, and, and hopefully the lessons learned will be lessons learned that can be institutionalized and not 
not forgotten and maybe yeah. AI can also help us, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Again, yeah. you, we have to free up uh, cost within the system to be able to care and use that, uh, that, those resources uh, for, for, for good. And the way you do that is through using technology. Yeah. So what does the next five years hold? Well, you mentioned we're hoping to put in place 40,000 jobs. Yes. So for us in, in New York City, we are putting in place more translational R&D. Yep. That way we work with the institutions that are doing this incredible research to pull that research forward and have it become a next therapeutic, a next device, a next sustainable food, mm -hmm. a next material that you could use for clothing yeah. um, that wouldn't necessarily end up in a landfill, right? And so we're thinking about how do we put in place that translational R&D, those incubators, um, to help companies form and, and grow here in New York City. And we're putting in place the space to grow. Um, and that could be buildings like this. Um, and, and last but not least, um, we want to build talent, right? Okay. So we have this incredible internships program. Uh, we also focus on um, supporting the next generation, giving more access to labs and, and STEM training, um, and also helping adults consider careers in life sciences. But you know, every uh, technical job in life sciences, there are three non-technical non jobs. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of different types yes. of roles, and we want to make sure the training and the access to those jobs are available. Um, and and uh, I will put a plug in for down the road. We're hoping to have a resource for New Yorkers to see what what can I access for life sciences. If you're a student, uh, a company person, a developer, um, you know any type of person, you can mm -hmm. go and see what what is life sciences. How can I access this this community myself? That's wonderful. You know, looking forward to that and looking forward to our partnership and making New York City the center for life sciences. Let's huh? do it. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Thank, Thank you, you for so. joining us. Thank you for having me.